What's up guys, welcome back to Decent Garage. Today we're gonna to be working on the Jeep again today. Uh, should be a pretty straightforward, kind of simple video, but let me show you what we have in store. So, we kind of treated the body with that linseed oil to kind of revive the paint a little bit. I need to put another coat on it. Um, you can see, I don't know if you can see on camera, but there's a couple spots where you can see that that oil just really just got soaked up into that uh, porous old faded paint. So the task for today is we are going to try and clean the engine bay a little bit. And what brought me to this point is I was thinking of doing the linseed oil on kind of the inner fenders and the core support. Um, so you can see I already cleaned this off with a rag. And then I figured, you know, I might as well just uh, disconnect the battery and pressure wash this thing and just see how much of this crud and crap we can get off of here. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go hook up the pressure washer. So you've kind of seen it before how dirty and nasty and gross and greasy it is. Just like that. Let's see how clean this engine bay can be. I, I don't know how this transformation is going to be. It might not clean up very much at all, but it might completely transform it. So I'm going to spray some purple power all over first. Let that sit while I get the pressure washer set up and then we're going to clean it out. All right, guys, it's cleaned out. Again, not perfect, but uh, pretty good. Uh, once we tear the fenders off and the hood off and really start to dive into the engine, we will really clean it. But look at this, it's blue. I mean, I could see it was a hint of blue before, but not to this extent. Uh, does it bring out the blue in my eyes? Comment below, let me know if you feel that way. Um, that was kind of my reaction when I saw the valve cover so comment below does that bring out the blue in my eyes but it looks really good um now the question is will it start i sprayed you know everything down to the bell housing and the starter and one thing i haven't brought up 
very often with this is the starters feels like it's on its way out but a lot of times when you try and start it, it just whines and it just takes a couple times for it to actually catch and start so I'm afraid with how I soaked the starter that that might be worse or I may have killed it so let's see if it starts after soaking it and cleaning it like that all right here we go see just like that So you can hear it catch there, so it should start now. It started. I was really worried about getting it so wet and if it would start, but it started just fine. But you could hear the starter there. All right, guys, it is a couple days later. I actually came to the conclusion that instead of trying to fix this starter, I would order a new one. So I got a new starter in here on the bench. There we go. So we're going to throw this in. Shouldn't be that hard of a task, knock on wood. And then we're gonna take the belt off for that smog pump and see how it runs. And uh, hopefully that kind of helps with the Jeep a little bit. So let's get to that. I got some other parts ordered for the Jeep as well, but we'll get to those at a later point. So let's get that starter changed and see if the starter issue goes away. All right, we got that all installed. Let's see if it's any better. Maybe we'll try starting it five times and see if it starts every time. One. Oh yeah. I think I feel safe saying that she is fixed. He, Lieutenant Dan is a he. So let's uh, take that smog pump belt off real quick and see how it runs without that. Um, I'm curious to see if that, you know, I think that pump creates a lot of vacuum for some of that smog stuff. So we'll see if it works. If not, we'll put the belt back on.
got the uh, smog pump loosened up so there's no tension on the belt. So I'm going to try starting it like that so it won't turn the smog pump. So that didn't work. Even with all the tension off the belt, it was still spinning the pump. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this hose off, which is the only hose coming off of the smog pump. And uh, we're just going to plug that off and see if that does it to test it. So let's do that real quick. So I need what looks to be about a three quarter inch plug of some sort. I don't have anything right now that fits that perfect. So what better use than a screwdriver? Just shove that in there. Screwdrivers work for just about everything. So put that in there and then let's try firing it up and see how it runs. So I had it blocked off. You could still hear air escaping past the screwdriver because it's not perfectly round. Um, and it ran okay, but when I really tried to block it off, like when I grabbed it with my fingers and kind of wrapped around the screwdriver, eh, the pump did not like it. Um, so when I plugged it back into the canister, it ran like it normally does, which is fine. So I think I'm gonna leave that stuff intact for now. I'm not familiar with the emissions stuff on this, uh, so anyone who knows, you know, what's the best way I can get rid of that stuff, I would imagine if I can truly get rid of it, it'll run better, as does any vehicle that you can delete the emissions stuff off of, so let me know what's the best way to go about it. I think I will have to buy a different carburetor, because there's a lot of vacuum lines from the uh, emissions stuff that go into the carburetor, so... Anyways, we got the engine bay cleaned, we got a new starter put on, and we messed around with emissions. Wouldn't say we necessarily deleted it, um, but it's running really good. It's starting better now. Um, I did find a Kubota V2203, which is Duddy. Uh, he pointed me in that direction to do a Kubota diesel swap on this. Um, I found one for a really good deal. I haven't picked it up yet. I'm debating, um, but the plans may have already changed for this and we may swap a Kubota diesel in here. So stand by, that will not be in the near future. If I buy it, it'll sit in the garage till next spring probably, till I save up some money to buy some stuff for the conversion kit, but that could be happening. So anyways, thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Comment below, help me out on this emission stuff. Uh, or is it just better just to leave it intact? Like this video if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you guys in the next video.